What's up guys? How are you all doing? Hey, welcome to another video. You asked for it, so I got it. We're going to be checking out how to measure AC current with one of these guys. If that sounds like something you'd be interested in, stay tuned because it's coming up right here, right now on MI's Ferry. All right, guys, so to start off our video, we're gonna be checking out how to uh, measure AC current uh, with an Arduino. Now, I know the first thing you're saying is, how can you use a device that's built for DC current and measure AC current with it? So those of you that don't know, I'm sure there's plenty of you out there that do know how this is done, but I'm gonna give a, a kind of a brief synopsis of how you do this. Um, the cool thing about alternating current, oh yes, and I have I have my hat on today because I have been slumming it. It's been, it's been actually, it's actually been kind of cool being uh, stuck at home. Um, it's not really that bad uh, over here in uh, where I live here in the U.S. We've been uh, told that we should stay indoors or basically sit in place. So interesting times we're in, but I don't really have to get ready for the day, which is awesome. I know that some of you would probably be like, oh, you should get ready for the day and keep your routine. It helps your mental sanity. Well, for me, it helps my mental sanity to just slob around. It's great. Anyway, um, <laughs> rant over with. Any case, uh, I'm going to be showing you how to do this. So how do we get that into here? Well, what we're going to be looking at is CTs or what's called a current transformer. All right. So I got some pictures of it here for you. Current transformers are uh, very interesting. Ooh, I kind of put that picture in the wrong place, didn't I? Let me move me down. Um, current transformers are a very interesting uh, device. You have probably seen them and just not know not known what they were. Uh, those of you that don't know what those are, um, current transformers basically work off of the flux that is created by uh, alternating current. Um, basically, I've got some here. This guy uh, right here is a uh, PCB mount uh, current transformer, or sometimes they're referred to as a Rogalski Rigolfsky coil or something like that, but basically it's it's a current transformer. Um, there's some that are uh, total core, uh, some that are uh, little, basically they look like toroids kind of that are sealed that you run the wire through and they measure the current off of it. Or there's some that are called split core uh, ones where the core is actually removable so that way you don't have to disconnect the wire uh, to measure it. <clears throat> so what we'll be looking at, um, let me see if I can go to the next one, this is probably what you've seen before. In fact, I even have one next to me. Um, they're usually called, well, I don't knock everything off the bench getting it out for you guys. Um, they're, also, they're also called a current clamp. So I have one right here. You see these on meters, like the one in the picture and the one that I have. Um, you just open it up. This is basically a split core because it splits the core. And if you look inside, I don't know if you can see that very well, but there is a iron... Uh, court, whoops, wrong side. Sorry. You guys are probably like, what are you talking about? There's an iron side, uh, iron core that's in there, that's in the middle. And that's basically what it is, is it's basically a wire wrapped around an iron core, kind of like a transformer. Um, I'll show you what I mean. Let's go to the next picture. So this is kind of, let me move me back up here. This is kind of what I mean. What, uh, what this is, is basically you have a ferromagnetic core, okay, with some windings around it. Now, there's all kinds of design deals, like how many windings equals how many times it it, it magnifies the, the current or whatever. But basically, all you need to know is as the wire is going through here, you have a primary current running through here. Now, this could be a lot. It could be 20 amps, 30 amps, 50 amps, which a little Arduino is not going to stand a chance against 20 amps of AC current. It's going to blow it all to pieces, right? So <clears throat> what we do is this then on the secondary side, it will, by the turns ratio, kind of like a transformer, because that's why it's called a current transformer, it will make a current loop through here of a lot smaller scaling than what the, the primary uh, current is. So you can take something that's like 20 amps and reduce it to 20 milliamps or something like that. Now, <clears throat> there's always a burden resistor shorted across it. Why? Because last time I checked, you can't ADC current, right? You ADC voltage. <clears throat> I'm sure there's a way, but uh, we won't get into that. <laughs> but basically, these uh, ADC the voltage. So the way you can do that is by putting a resistor, resistor across it and then measuring ADCing the voltage across that resistor, 
right? So then you get a voltage representation and it's proportional to the current that's running through it. So you, if you know the voltage, you know the resistance, you can know the current. And if you know the turns ratio of your CT, then you know the multiplier and there you go. You know, you have everything you need. So now what we're going to be looking at today is we're going to be using these SCT uh, CTs that are going in. These are actually fairly cheap. You can get them off Amazon. I've got links down in the description and yes, they are affiliate links. So if you use them, you'll help out the channel. Um, but links down in the description, uh, for many different ones of these, some of these are, uh, 50 amp rated. Some are 20 amp rated, uh, others are 30. And then there's some of them that are hundred amp rated uh, that they'll convert, you know, hundred amps down. Now we won't be looking at the hundred amp one because it does not have a burden resistor on it. You will have to uh, add one yourself. The other ones actually already have a burden resistor built into the actual uh, device. So you you basically, you know, it just puts out voltage. When you hook it up out the end of this, it just gives you a voltage. Now, most of the time, like the one that we're gonna be using is the SCT-013 uh, 20 amp version, okay? And it is basically 20 amps per volt. So when it's maxed out at 20 amps, it will deliver one, one volt. Now the key is one volt AC, not DC. So you're going to get a sinusoid that comes out of it. I'll tell you how to deal with that here in just a second, but you're going to get basically a one volt peak to peak sine wave out of the thing. Okay. So that's what it's talking about. All right. So now let's go ahead and let's get into this. So what does our circuit look like for this thing? Well, <clears throat> basically we've got, I'm using a Leonardo board. I know I've been showing the, the Uno, but it's because it's the only other board I have that is, is disconnected. I've got the other one connected up because I'm gonna demo it to you here at the end of the video. So basically what we need is, I would like to have a little bit more precision than what the Arduino can uh, allow. And I would like to do a differential uh, measurement. So basically, since a sine wave goes negative, you know, you've got it centered around zero, right? So there's no DC offset to it, or at least, you know, not in this sense, there's ways of putting DC offset in it, just in case if you have an ADC that you can't uh, do uh, differentials with or things like that. I can get into that later. Let me know down in the comments. I can get into that later, but I'm not going to cover that for this video. Right now, we're going to look at differential inputs, and we're going to be a little more accurate. The ADC that the Leonardo comes with is, I think, it's like a 10-bit ADC. So if it's 10-bit, that's 2 to the 10th power. That's only 1024. So you only have 1024 counts as the max that you can do. So your resolution is going to not be real great. So you're going to have some gaps. So I recommend using the ADS uh, 1115. Okay. You can get these from Amazon. Another link down in the description. You can get them from Amazon. You can get them from Adafruit. You can get them from pretty much anywhere. These little breakout boards. Um, this one's, uh, that I have in the, in the schematic here is an Adafruit one, but they're simple. They use, uh, SPI. So you got your serial clock, serial, uh, uh, data and you're done basically for communicating with it. It's real simple to use and it is a 16 bit. Well, now instead of having zero to 1024, now you've got two to the 16th power, which is 65,000, uh, 65, 530, 536. So yeah, which technically you get zero to 65, 535 is what you get. So a whole lot more resolution. So now instead of 1000, you got 65,000. So it's pretty good. Now, the key to remember is you're going to be using a differential input. So differentially, that means you're going to split that scale in half. So instead of it going from 0 to 65,535, you're actually going to have it go from 0 to 32,767, and then from 32,768 to 65,535. Meaning, instead of your 0 being set at 0 counts, it's going to be set at 35 or 32,767. That's going to be zero. Anything below that, I believe, is negative. Anything above that is positive. And there's some libraries that will take care of it. But I'm just giving you a general understanding. Again, if you want more explanation, let me know in the comments. So basically, you just hook this thing up, you give it some power, you give it some ground, and then you basically hook up your serial clock and data. Um, this ADDR, which I think is, is, Oh, I can't remember what that is. Uh, it's like an activate. You pull that to active low. Um, and then basically we're going to use A0 and A1, okay, as our differential input. So that's going to go to our CT. And honestly, it doesn't matter uh, the polarity because, you know, a sine wave is, you know, 
whatever, you know, it's the same up top and down below. So um, doesn't matter which way you want to hook it up. Uh, doesn't matter. So that's basically our hardware. So let's go ahead and take a peek at the software, shall we? Okay, so we got our software set up. So what I did was I downloaded uh, the Adafruit library for this, which is the ADS 1015, because the 1015 and the 1115 are really close together. Um, I think one is a 12-bit, I think is the 1015, and the 1116, or 1115 11 is the 16-bit uh, ones. Pretty easy to do. You just go up to your uh, tools, um, let's see, go to your manage your libraries and then you're going to do the ADS 11 or 10, 15, search for it. And it's this first one by Adafruit. They did a really good job, uh, building the library file for this. So that's basically what it is. So you install that and then you'll be able to include this. All right. So we declare an analog to digital converter. Now, <clears throat> first piece is the factor. So what this is, is this is going to be our, we're going to have a factor of 20 because we've got 20 amps per volt. That's what our, our uh, CT is. In fact, I can probably show it to you. So if you look at the bottom of this, see if hopefully it'll focus, focus camera at the bottom of that, you can see 20 amps per volt. Okay. So that's the one we're going to be using. So we're going to put a 20 in now where this multiplier and stuff comes in is based on this gain. Okay. This is really confusing. I have a link down below for the Adafruit document, kind of explaining it a little bit, but basically um, what we're wanting to do is it's based on the, the software is based on a zero to five volt measurement. So <clears throat> if we're down only zero to one volt, it's it the resolution's not going to be very good. We're going to be down in the bottom side of that zero to 65, 535. We don't want that. We want that one volt to be scaled across that whole 65,000. That way it gives us a really good measurement. So what they recommend in their code is to set this gain to a gain of four. That way the gain of four takes a plus or minus differential voltage from 1.024 volts uh, or basically across the whole scale. Of course, if you notice, it's 1024. Yeah, pairs of two. Yeah. Anyway, so what that essentially means is one bit, one bit, so as it goes, as it does count, so one count is equal to a half of a millivolt. Now, the, what threw me in the beginning was I was thinking it was half a volt. No, it's half a millivolt. So that means it's 0 0.0005. Okay, so that's really small. So this is the same thing as 0 0.0005, okay? So I was thinking it was 0.5, nope, 0 0.0005, and that was giving me some headache when I was uh, testing this out. I was thinking, what is wrong? That's It's half a millivolt, okay? So then we begin it, <clears throat> and then we get going through here. Now, this one will do this code right here, will do, which is also linked down below to the repository. I've got a repository out there for you guys, so you guys can uh, download this code and play with it. I am doing a root mean squared because obviously whenever you measure something with a current meter, it's going to be the RMS voltage. You don't care about the uh, the peak voltages. You need the RMS voltage. So we are performing a root mean squared uh, calculation. That's down here in the uh, <clears throat> down here in our uh, get current function. That's down here. So we just have this print measure. It's just a little function. And this basic skeleton of the code. Sorry, I kicked the microphone. Is um, Provided I have a link down below where I got it from. Now, I did make some uh, a lot of tweaks to it, but uh, the basic code link is down below, so I want to give credit where credit is due. This uh, The skeleton of all this, it was not mine. It was uh, in the link down below as well um, for the base code, but I made some manipulations to it, so I'm making it my own here. So we're going to declare some variables, um, and what we're going to do is we're going to do this about a 1,000 times. That's what this is doing with this millisecond mills command. And we're going to basically just read the ADC and we're going to read the differential ADC. Zero one, what that means is that we're using ports analog zero and analog one. You can also use uh, the other ports that are available on this device, which is uh, analog uh, two and three, I believe you can use for that. Uh, but we're used to using zero and one, so that's why we choose that. We're going to multiply it by our multiplier. Remember, because once it gets the raw count, we need to multiply it by the half a volt. And see, there's our, there's our multiplier by half a millivolt. Okay. So once we do that, then we'll get a raw voltage that we're measuring. We'll have it in volts then. Then we need to multiply it by our scaling factor. Since we have 20 amps per volt, 
we're going to multiply it by that 20, by that factor, okay? And then what we're going to do is we're going to go down here. That was where I was, I was actually debugging, so ignore that. Um, and then we're going to do the sum of squares. So there's the square of the current. We're going to add it to the sum, and then we're going to increment our counter, and we're just going to keep going. Once we get done uh, with the root mean square, once we've done this a thousand times or whatever, then we're going to come down here, and we're going to square root the sum divided by the counter. That's basic root mean squared, okay? And then we'll just return the current. So enough of me rambling along about the code. You can download this, like I said, links down below and check it out for yourself. Let's get into demoing it. Okay guys, so I got our stuff hooked up here. So I'm gonna pull open our serial monitor. I've got it powered up and uh, the code is loaded, okay? So I've got our serial monitor here. I've got hooked up over here a four ohm thousand watt uh, I don't know if you can see it. Let's see if I can pull it over here without knocking things over. Big old resistor. That's right. So huge old resistor. So that's four ohms. So that should be about 20 amps. That should max this bad boy out. So I will turn the switch on. We'll see in the meter right here what, uh, what it actually is with a good fluke meter. And then We've got our CT, I don't know if you can see that, that blue little guy. Got our CT put together and we'll see what it says. So I can only do this for a little bit because this gets really, really hot at 20 amps and 120 volts. I mean, that's that's a lot. That's, what is that? Two, that's 24, 2400 watts. Did I do that right? 240 watts, 200, yeah, 240 watts, something like that. Anyway, a lot. Here we go, so let's watch the screen. So there's 24, it's a little more. We got about 20.87 and it was about 24. So it is off. And I've noticed that it's off the higher it goes. And why is because it's not so much the, uh, the calculation. It is the fact that CTs are very nonlinear, which means they have uh, losses and things that are in them. And they have non nonlinearities to where it's not like a steady, like it gets off by so much to where you can offset that out. You actually have to calculate the nonlinearity of it and basically null that out with a polynomial equation. So since I didn't want to go through that and that would be so complicated to try to explain, I'm not messing with it. 24 or 20 amps and it being 24, I mean, by the time you're 20 amps, uh, you know, the breaker is going to pop. So uh, I'm not real worried about it. So let me go ahead and switch it up and get something that's a little less. Uh, I got another one that's about 8 ohms. So it's somewhere around 13 amps. So let me uh, pause, hook that up, and we'll see what that one looks like. Okay, so I've switched them up. <clears throat> I now have the 8 ohm uh, plugged in. So let me go ahead and turn my auto scroll on, get down here at the bottom. All right, so let's now see what we get when we turn this one on. So we got about 13.6. And we're at 13.8, 13.9, 14, somewhere around on there. Uh, it's jumping around a little bit, but not too bad. 13.9, and eh, we're what, 0.6 off, something like that from what actually uh, is there. In fact, I could do a fast min max here. Let's do that. We'll turn it on. 13.6, turn it off. So 13.85 and 13.65. Eh, you know, that's close enough. You know, two tenths off, not too awfully bad. So accuracy ah, it's close i'd say it's close you know but basically that's how you check out ac current using your arduino so again something to play with something to see definitely check out the links down below there will be a link to the repository as well as links to all the different materials and things that i've used uh in the amazon links down below and that really helps out the channel definitely check out the different uh social medias down below make sure you post any projects that you do if you try this out i would love to see them post it on my reddit down below and we will review them on our maker monday so guys stay tuned for more videos and i will see you next time Thank <laughs> you.